Listen, you know, this is probably the first time in the history of Bitcoin that we have true price discovery. And what I mean by that is this is the first time that anyone who wants to buy it has easy access to buy it. And so, right, baby boomers have $85 trillion of wealth. Their wealth is, for the most part, managed through registered investment advisors who now at least half of them or some some portion of them can just buy the ETF. And so you're seeing you know, a, a step function in new owners of, of Bitcoin, which is driving, I would say, a frenzy in the whole crypto ecosystem, right? So how crypto always works is Bitcoin gets bought and some people sell a little bit to buy Ethereum and they try to play the catch ups and the altcoins. And I would say we've gotten to very frothy, frothy levels. You can see it in the funding rates of uh, of the altcoin market, how much you get paid to actually lend out your coins um, in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and, and all the alts. And so you could, you saw it in the equities, the public equity markets, um, right? MicroStrategy Marathon, all the kind of public equity bellwethers uh, really went parabolic along with Bitcoin. And, and so I wouldn't be surprised to see some correction and some consolidation but I'm very loath to pick a Bitcoin high because I really do believe this is price discovery. Um, will we test the old high most likely? Uh, and you'll probably have some consolidation, but I still think we're gonna end the year much higher. Bitcoin will likely see a correction before rallying to new record highs. Bitcoin could fall to around $50,000, but over the long term, baby boomer wealth will take Bitcoin much higher, with Bitcoin destined to reach new all-time highs. This is the latest message from Galaxy Digital CEO Mike Novogratz. Recently, he spoke on the underlying dynamics driving Bitcoin's unprecedented surge in value. Novogratz dives into the widespread accessibility of Bitcoin, highlighting how it represents a paradigm shift in investment behavior, particularly amongst baby boomers. Furthermore, Novogratz touched on the role of speculation and leverage in driving market volatility, cautioning investors about potential risks associated with these factors. He stressed the importance of understanding Bitcoin beyond its price fluctuations, underscoring its emergence as a store of value and a hedge against currency debasement. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Novogratz shares his perspective on the BlackRock ETF and how it's a game changer for institutional investors. Also guys, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy staying up to date with finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and can always change your mind. Now here's why Mike Novogratz thinks Bitcoin's price is about to go parabolic. You know, we broke out from 45,000, uh, you know, and so that would probably be what should hold us uh, if there's a real correction. You never know why corrections come, something happens and people you know, shift mindset. And there's a lot of people that have bought recently. Uh, I don't think it'll get there, quite frankly. I think if it corrects, it probably collect, co corrects to the mid 50s before taking off to the uh, to the new high. Uh, you know, first the old high, that's 68, 69,000, where we got pretty close. And but I do think then you're going to see and partly this is, you know, if you look at Fidelity or any of these big platforms that have so much baby boomer wealth, just shifting two to three percent, one to three percent of those assets, encouraging their customers to shift to Bitcoin over time, which has been an amazing diversifier, is a monster number, right? Think about, it, like I said, 85 trillion of of baby boomer wealth. You know, three percent of that is two and a half trillion, right? The whole market cap of Bitcoin is only a uh, a little more than 1.2 trillion, and so. Again, we're we're going to see a step change function. We're in the process, uh, and and I like to call it price discovery. A good friend mentioned that. I was like, he's dead right. That's what it is. And where do you think Bitcoin is a year from now? Much higher. Um, you know, listen. How do you put yardsticks around something? Right. We know gold is a twelve trillion dollar asset. Bitcoin's about a tenth of a tenth of gold. Uh, could Bitcoin be half of gold at one point? Sure, it could. It will be. And at one point, it will be larger than gold, uh, right? Again, for every Charlie Munger, God rest his soul, who passes away, that money is finding its way into Gen Z and millennials. And they feel much more comfortable with digital gold than old clunk clunky gold. Uh, I'm kind of halfway in between. I like a little of both. I got some gold coins uh, that we give out on our podcast because uh, it's, you know, you can touch it. But, but I go to a lot more Bitcoin than I do gold. Listen, in every mania, in every excitement, people are going to buy at the wrong level because it feels easy 
and then they're going to get washed out and they're going to sell at the wrong level and then it's going to go back up and they're going to let's say i can't believe i sold like that's just part of speculation and it's part of investing um you could say the same with nvidia or tesla or anything that you know has monster moves everyone has fomo and so yes some investors are going to buy at the wrong level and then stop out at the wrong level uh what has been unbelievably impressive about the core bitcoin community is just how resilient they've been down i remember doing an interview with you a year ago uh you know at eighteen thousand, and the core bitcoiners just took pain and so i don't think the core group of people that have owned this thing and really loved it and promoted it there are no sellers there you know michael Saylor ain't selling um and the you know new people are going to kind of ease in listen i don't think you're buying it into your 401k and selling it a month later right and so most of this new money i think is going to be sticky money or hodler money uh, in, in crypto terms but the retail you know the young speculation uh that's happening on you know all the apps and on robin hood and on on uh coinbase and everywhere else that's gonna have blow off tops and blow off bottoms and and, and people are going to get chopped up like they always do in speculative manias. You know, again, Paul Tudor Jones taught me like year three of my Wall Street career. Prices are set at the margin. When we have more marginal buyers than marginal sellers, prices go up. And that's what I mean by price discovery. There's a new army of buyers. There's an army of salespeople. I mean, what BlackRock is doing is breathtaking, right? That's an army of salespeople being endorsed by their CEO saying, guys, this is an important part of the future. Uh, we didn't have that six months ago. And so I do think um, like it's going to be hard to figure out where equilibrium is in the next six to 12 months. But so now they think about it, it before the halving with that uh, 60,000 Bitcoin, it's about 54,000, $54 million a day of new supply, right? We have one customer who is one of the retail apps that pretty much buys 30, 30 to $35 million a day just with us. And I'm sure we're not the only person they buy with, right? There is a tremendous global demand for Bitcoin. And so when you see what's driving the market day to day right now is at eight o'clock at night, all the ETFs talk about how much they bought or sold. And, you know, it was $500 million or four million. million. As long as those numbers stay positive, you're going to see some momentum in Bitcoin. The first day they go negative, people are going to sell off Bitcoin because they think, oh, the ETF funds are going to slow. And so that's, that's kind of like the insider's way of looking at this in the short term. But that's a little myopic. You know, let's look each month at what the total flows into Bitcoin is from that ETF community plus other communities. You know, after the halving, that 54 million thing goes to 27 million. I mean, that's, that's, that's a bid-ass spread uh, right now. And so there's just not a lot of supply. This is one of the least least inflationary assets or most deflationary assets there is. It's why, you know, when you see our government spending so much money, people are are drawn to this narrative. Well, there's a tremendous amount of liquidity in the market right now, uh, a shocking amount. I mean, I was looking at just some of the, the, the volumes of the stocks that traded. Forget the ETFs, which traded record volumes yesterday, but look at MicroStrategy's volume yesterday or Marathon or Riot's. You know, the, the U.S. equity market has monster volume in crypto. You're starting to see it on on the exchanges, you know, and, and uh, the crypto exchanges. And so plenty of liquidity, which means that lots of people are getting leveraged. I think the market is too leveraged right now. It just it, it, it happens after huge runs. You have leverage at the max, at the highs. Val, there will be a washout. I don't know when it is today, tomorrow, two weeks, a month. Um, it'll be, you know. I hate to call things healthy washouts because it never feels healthy when you lose money. And when there's a washout, the price will go down. Um, but there will be a washout. Uh, people can't sustain this much leverage. And remember, a lot of the offshore trading platforms can give you 50, 60, 70 to, to one leverage. And so you got a lot of, you know, millennials and Gen Z YOLOing it. And they will, they will get, some will make money and a lot of them will get wiped out. Well, I think the, the big, institutional players have less leverage, right? I mean, you know, you're not, you're not, very few people are buying an ETF with leverage. Uh, and the broker dealer community or the 
the kind of core players, I think learned a lot of lessons. And so I always said, like, we don't take a lot of leverage. Like, why would why would you take a lot of leverage on an 80 ball asset? You know? <laughs> In some ways, it's the definition of insanity to lever up an 80 ball asset. Um, but retail still loves leverage. And you're, you know, you're going to see this boom bust uh, in the short run with an overall really positive trend as people just keep deciding to allocate some of their portfolio to Bitcoin. The libertarian side of me says, you know, a two to one lever to ETF, people are big boys and they know what they're doing, right? We've got products all over the place. Uh, I don't want to be telling people, uh, you know, how much to bet or where, where they should bet. If I see someone betting 15 to one on something that's as volatile as Bitcoin, I'll tell them, I think you're, you need to go to your, your, your shrink here. Um, that's just a recipe for disaster. Um, but I think, you know, small amounts of leverage in anything is fine. Yeah, I, th I think that's the next big question for the community. Will, will Ethereum ETF get through? I know it doesn't feel like the SEC is making it easy. <laughs> are, we, are we, you know, the same logic that the Bitcoin ETF got through on, which was there's already a futures ETF. If you believed in that, how dare you not believe in a cash ETF holds for Ethereum. And so my bias is it gets through sometime this year. But we'll see. You know, Gary Gensler has been very careful about not declaring Ethereum a security. And you can have your own idea why. Uh, I'm sorry, not, to, not declaring Ethereum not a security. And you can have your own hypothesis why or why not. I would say it opens the, the gate if one proof of stake, uh, you know, crypto protocol like Ethereum uh, is not a security. Well, what about the next one and the next one and the next one? And so all of a sudden his argument that these are all securities would probably go out, go out the window. And so I'm sure there's a lot of internal to and fro around this, this question. But the reality is we already have an Ethereum futures ETF, and that was the logic that got the Bitcoin ETF approved. And so my bias is it happens because we do a lot of different things. Uh, you know, Galaxy's got an asset management business. We have uh, that literally went from, you know, a small asset management business. We've added four billion in AUM in the last two months. Uh, we're now over eight billion in AUM. We've got a sales and trading and derivative business uh, that's booming. Um, you know, we've got our own mining business that's having an amazing run. Uh, and so when I look, you know, we're very diversified and it feels really good right now. Uh, it didn't feel really good a year ago, right? It was a survival and, and chase loose balls environment. And now it's, you know, hire more people and keep building. Um, you know, tokenization is coming. Will it happen this year or will it happen the following year? My guess is it starts this year. Uh, that will be the next big thing uh, in crypto. Um, and so this transition, it didn't happen as fast as we all thought it might right back in 2017, but we are moving towards a tokenized world. We're moving towards a more digital world and you're gonna see more decentralized systems uh, and not supplant centralized systems, but but integrate with them. Uh, and so this is not a two year sprint. It is a it is a, a, a 10 year like, you know, force march. Um, but this idea of, you know, crypto pipes and transparency and identity uh, being digital of uh, computers, when you think about AI talking, computers talking to each other, they're going to talk to themselves in a digital currency, mm -hmm. in a digital language. And so stable coins is going to be bigger and bigger and Galaxy's trying to be part of that whole ecosystem. And so I think it's a it's a very different play. Listen, all right. the crypto stocks right now are correlated with with Bitcoin because it's we're so early in the cycle. Um, but in the long run, I think you'll see big differentiation. I think it's always been the same. It's in some ways it's a report card on fiscal prudence. It is a store of value. You can like it's a debasement of currency, a hedge. And so I say this all the time, uh, a house in America in 2011 cost $190,000. Today it's 400,000. That's the median house, right? So we have debased our currency. We've had asset inflation. At times we've had goods inflation. When you're printing as much money as we're printing, when we have 
constant now five, six percent of budget deficits, uh, hard assets go up and Bitcoin is a hard asset for the new generation. It is digital gold. And if you just keep on digital gold, uh, this is why people are buying it. And that narrative is powerful. What would change that narrative, that adoption narrative? Well, you know, we have a new president that probably not Biden or Trump, and he gets Congress to pass a balanced budget amendment or a Simpson Bowles amendment. And we start trying to take that 130 percent of debt to GDP back to 80. Right now it's headed to 250. And so that is literally the ad. You just look at the graph of debt to GDP in America and many other countries. And that is the advertisement for why people buy Bitcoin. So there's Mike Novogratz with his take on Bitcoin's roller coaster ride. He's pointing out the twists and turns ahead, like how the price might dip before soaring to new highs. But he's also not just talking numbers. Novogratz is diving into why this is happening. He's highlighting how more people, especially baby boomers, are jumping into the Bitcoin game through the ETFs. Novogratz also warns about the risks of speculation and leverage, reminding us to be cautious. But amidst the ups and downs, he sees Bitcoin as more than just a trend. It's becoming a valuable asset, a hedge against economic uncertainty. In a nutshell, Novogratz's insights are like a roadmap through the wild world of Bitcoin, helping us navigate the twists and turns with a clearer understanding of what's driving it all. Before we go, a quick reminder for those who are keen on staying updated in the fast-paced world of crypto and Bitcoin. Consider subscribing to our daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news, and top on-chain analysis trusted by over 50,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Click the first link in the description to join our community and elevate your crypto investment knowledge today. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one, and as always, all the best.